Look, it's as the title says. J.K. Rowling has been posting some rather hateful views on social media this past week, and this video is not about my analysis of them. I, like many people of my generation who have grown up with the Harry Potter books, who have taken this book series and to some degree made it part of our cultural identity, I have a lot of feelings. Feelings of hurt, feelings of anger, feelings of disappointment. But I am a cisgender woman. The transphobic comments made by J.K. Rowling don't affect me directly. My gender isn't called into question by J.K. Rowling. My life isn't put in danger by her faulty rhetoric and false narratives. None of my feelings, however strongly I feel them, are what matters here. My opinions on this are not based on a lived experience of discrimination and oppression. You should therefore not care about my hot take on J.K. Rowling. This isn't drama, this isn't tea, this isn't a story. This is discrimination and transphobia in real life. And there have been enough cisgender hot takes on this. So instead of adding to this in this video, I will recommend resources, mostly videos, but also podcasts that were created by the people whose opinions you should listen to, trans people and experts. Uh, these uh, videos and resources are by no means exhaustive and are really just some of the creators whose content I have been following for a long time and whose videos and podcasts on this I find enlightening and informative. So I hope you will as well. All of the links to these videos and resources are linked in the description box. And only at the end of this video I will briefly talk about what my own personal actions are going to be with regards to this. First, I would like to recommend to you two videos by YouTuber Cat Black. The first one, from about half a year ago, has the title So, let's talk about J.K. Rowling's tweet, and it's from about half a year ago in response to J.K. Rowling's first tweet back in December. You remember, sleep with whoever, have you? This is a detailed video essay on that tweet, uh, going through it point by point, word by word, and explaining the background and history of Rowling's problematic opinions on social media. This video is really thorough and informative, and it really goes in depth on J.K. Rowling's well-known history of transphobia. Kat's second video is a lot more recent from last week, and it was prompted by that second wave of transphobic tweets. In this one, which has the eye-catching title, J.K. Rowling is transphobic, dot dot dot, so what? She speaks from a more personal perspective and talks about her own exhaustion at having to discuss Rowling's blatant transphobia again and again and again. She then goes on to explain the whole idea of transphobia. Uh, she really breaks down what it is and why it is wrong and dangerous. The second creator I would like to point you towards is Nathaniel from the Council of Geeks YouTube channel. They have actually spoken about Rowling three times in three fantastic and passionate videos, all of which I recommend you watch. The first one, like Cat Black's first video, was released in December after the first Rowling tweet about trans people. Uh, this one has the title, Is J.K. Rowling Transphobic? Yes, and I'll explain how. Nathaniel speaks very much from the perspective as a fan, as a member of the fandom, and they talk about the stress and the pain and the personal hurt that came with this tweet, though not, like many others have already expressed, surprise. In Nathaniel's videos, uh, whether they're about Doctor Who or Harry Potter or any other fandom or pop culture phenomenon, they always go really deep into the content and the story. And in this video from last year, uh, they explain about how an author like J.K. Rowling going on a hateful tirade on Twitter is really detracting from the geeky and nerdy discussion about stories that they really excel in. 
Anyway, this video, again, goes rather in depth into the history of rolling and transphobic rhetoric in general. Nathaniel's second video was recorded after J.K. Rowling's essay, and uh, it bears the title A Few Words on J.K. Rowling. This one's much shorter and much, much more personal. This video is about one, and I want to stress this, one trans fan's relationship with the stories and the fandom. They speak of their love for the fandom, in spite of and separate from the author and the books themselves. They talk really powerfully about this distinction of author, content and fandom, but also about the emotional links between the three and their own need for distance from this fandom. This video is truly full of love and defiance, and if you're going to only watch one of Nathaniel's videos, make it this one. The third one on the Council of Geeks channel was actually uploaded the day after the second one, but was in fact recorded before it. This one is not directly only about Rowling and her tweets, but instead about the wide issue of, quote, enjoying the works of problematic creators. And I found it really thought-provoking and informative, and they really break down the different aspects of the whole separating the art from the artist issue. Using three examples of problematic book authors, one of which is J.K. Rowling, they go through the details and differences and various approaches that they take as a fan of those works. This is a really nuanced discussion video, and I would recommend it if you, like me, um, have been questioning that relationship between a problematic author's work and yourself. Let's move on to the third creator I want to recommend to you. Now, J.K. Rowling's brand of transphobia is very heavily influenced by a kind of very UK-specific discourse in certain feminist circles that I haven't seen to that same degree on American social media. So I think it's important that we listen to British voices on this, and I am glad that Jamie, whose YouTube channel is called Jammy Dodger, has made two videos about rolling. The first one, like the other first videos that I have been talking about, was released in December, and Jamie released this as part of his Trans Guy Reacts series, in which he reacts to various trans-related things on the internet, tweets, memes, ads, etc. Some of them are really quite funny, some of them less so. This one, needless to say, is one of the more serious videos, and he just speaks very directly about his own feelings on the earlier J.K. Rowling tweet, explaining why it's transphobic, and also explaining the specific British context of that tweet, mainly the Maya Forstater tribunal case. Rowling has been just spreading lies about this case, and Jamie goes through the actual citations of the judge, uh, as well as the legal background of this case. In his second video from last week, with the title J.K. Rowling's Anti-Trans Tweets, he discusses exactly those. And by the time Jamie recorded this video, you can tell that he's just over it. He's over having to talk about J.K. Rowling in the middle of a pandemic as black people fight for their literal lives and just in time to kick off Pride Month. And yet he still took the time and recorded this video, which is personal and powerful and very direct, and I really appreciate that. He talks us through the false narratives, the rhetorical dog whistles and condescending nonsense in Rowling's tweets, and he is having none of it. Just the energy of this video, honestly. It's sharp, it's righteous, it's angry, it's clever, and it's very, very British. Let's move on to an amazingly detailed video discussion by Jessie Gender, who talks about social issues and geek culture on her YouTube channel. And she released a video with the title Breaking Down J.K. Rowling's a Transphobic Essay, and that's exactly what she proceeds to do in that video. Now, this is the only video I've seen so far that specifically discusses the infamous essay, uh, which J.K. Rowling tweeted about with the hilarious pun, Turf Wars. 
Anyway, Jessie's analysis is spot on. I was completely overwhelmed when I read that blog post at first, and Jessie takes that apart almost point by point, argument by argument. She doesn't just point out the blatant lies and falsehoods of the essay, but also the linguistic features that make this piece of writing particularly dangerous and manipulative. This is a really long video. Jessie really takes her time to go into detail, but it's worth every minute. So sit down with it, watch it and pay attention. And the last video I want to recommend in the unlikely case that you're not one of the 2.1 million people who've already seen it is the video essay by Natalie from ContraPoints titled Gender Critical. This video came out early last year and it doesn't at all address J.K. Rowling specifically, but I actually rewatched this last week because it is still the best and most thoughtful and thorough exploration of gender critical feminism and transphobia that I have come across on YouTube. This video is a pure intellectual masterpiece. It's truly a feast for all senses, looking at the concept of gender critical feminism from pretty much all angles and going really deep into the rhetoric and philosophy and history of it. If you have already seen this video, then go and watch it again. My last recommendations are for podcasts specifically from the Harry Potter fan community. One of the biggest and oldest Harry Potter podcasts, MuggleCast, just released an episode in which they interview Dr. Sarah Steelman, who's a therapist who specializes in LGBTQ plus affirmative practices. She is both an expert on trans issues and a fan of the Harry Potter books. And the entire episode is absolutely enlightening. Similar to Jesse Gender's video, the Mugglecast hosts and the expert go through the essay point by point, fact checking and myth busting along the way. Another one of the biggest and oldest fan podcasts, Pottercast, has not released an episode about this current Twitter tirade as of yet, but their episode from half a year ago, you know, after J.K. Rowling tweeted similar nonsense, is worth listening to still. The hosts interview Jackson Bird, who is a trans activist, author, educator, and grew up as a Harry Potter fan. His insights into the December tweet are just as relevant in this current situation, and I really urge you to listen to that whole episode. And finally, two Harry Potter podcasts that haven't released special episodes about recent events, but that I recommend you listen to anyway if you want to engage with the Harry Potter books through a queer and intersectional feminist prism. The first one is Witch Please, which sadly is no longer active but has a backlog of episodes worth listening to for sharply witty and incredibly clever feminist discussion of the books, films and fandom in general. And the second one is The Gaily Prophet, which goes through a really thorough and detailed chapter by chapter discussion of the books uh, with a particular focus on queer themes as well as generally taking a detailed look at all of the issues that you may have missed when you read these books as a child. Problematic and less so. Highly recommended for any fan of the books. So these were my recommendations for trans and expert voices that should be listened to right now instead of cisgender booktubers such as myself. Please feel free to add your own recommendations in the comments, bearing in mind these two conditions. First, please don't paste links into the comments because YouTube will flag them as spam and then no one gets to see your recommendations at all. If you want to recommend a specific video by anyone, then um, comment with the name of the creator and the title of the video, and then we can all go and search for those videos ourselves. And second, and most importantly, any transphobia or other offensive language will get your comment removed, deleted, without warning. I am not here to engage with your transphobia. I don't care about your devil's advocate opinions and I will not subject my viewers to your shitty views. So you have been warned. 
This is not an invitation to discuss the validity and existence and human rights of trans people. This video is meant to be for sharing resources and amplifying the voices of people who we should really be listening to right now. In the final part of this video, I want to briefly talk about what I'm going to do with regards to Harry Potter and my own relationship to it. Feel free to skip this bit and go and watch the videos and listen to the podcast that I linked you to in the description box. I have on this channel made several videos directly about J.K. Rowling's content in the past, some of which, like my latest Robert Galbraith book review, have been rather successful. I will donate all of the ad revenue that I made from those videos to the Mermaids UK charity, as well as any money I make from this video, provided it doesn't get demonetized. I will also stop putting money into J.K. Rowling's pockets by no longer buying her books new or buying any official Harry Potter merchandise or tickets to see future Fantastic Beasts films. This is actually not a new thing. I've been consciously abstaining from her content for a while, but this is the first time that I've mentioned it here. And I know what you're thinking. She's a literal billionaire. She doesn't care about the 12 quid from a cinema ticket. And true, one individual consumer doesn't make a difference, but a whole bunch of us does. Voting with your dollar is real. Finally, I will not make any further videos that solely discuss J.K. Rowling's writing. I can't promise I'll never mention Harry Potter again, because it is a big and important part of my life, but I will not promote her work anymore on this channel. And lastly, my podcast. I run a Harry Potter podcast called Have a Biscuit Potter, and it's been on a hiatus for a while. I don't think I can continue with it in good conscience. I won't delete the episodes that are already there, and who knows, I might return to it in the future. Maybe things will change. Maybe my own feelings on this will change. Maybe J.K. Rowling will change, one can only hope. But for now, I'm considering this podcast finished, and I will remove the links to it in my future video description boxes. Now, the money and resources and social media attention that I am withdrawing from J.K. Rowling, I will continue to distribute towards fan creators. I love the Hogwarts fan art that I bought on Etsy that is hanging on my office wall right behind the camera. I love the literal dozen of Harry Potter podcasts that I'm subscribed to and listen to every week. I love the fan discussions on social media. I will continue to engage with the inclusive and diverse Harry Potter fan community through consuming their media and their art. This is it for now. If you're still here, go and watch those videos like I told you. There's a good muggle. Thank you for watching. Bye.